Don't miss any of this video today. You're about to witness the judge in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial scream at the prosecution because they're doing such a bad job prosecuting this case. Now, I'm going to tell you why the judge was angry and give you another incident when the judge yelled at the prosecution. Then I'm going to tell you all the things that Kyle is charged with and how the prosecution is doing on those charges. And then do not miss the end of this video because I'm going to tell you the biggest bombshell of all is the prosecution screwing up on purpose because if Kyle Rittenhouse is acquitted on these charges, they've blown the whole thing forever unless they get a mistrial with really, really bad lawyering at the helm of all of this. So here's the judge about to give a thrashing to the prosecution. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury? You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law. It's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that. And it gives... Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, leave it at that. Yeah, he's going to so leave it at I that. It gives the defense a lot to work with, is what the judge was going to say. Now, why is the judge so mad? This is mind-blowing. Check this out. Assistant District Attorney Thomas Binger started a line of questioning that targeted Kyle Rittenhouse's decision to remain silent. You know, your constitutional right to remain silent? This should be elementary stuff for an attorney. Uh, after Rittenhouse's attorney, Mike Richards, objected, Kenosha County Judge Bruce Schroeder paused the trial, sent the jury out of the room, and told Binger he was close to crossing the line. I was astonished, the judge said, when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. Your silence doesn't prove any guilt at all. It is your constitutional right, after anything happens, to remain silent. And you not cooperating with law enforcement or just remaining silent is not indicative of any guilt on your part. This is Basic, basic stuff. And the judge once again got angry at the prosecutor. Uh, Watch this, another verbal lashing. This is ridiculous. It, you was, know, it wasn't excluded, Your Honor. You know why it was excluded in the first place? Because it's, it was propensity evidence. That is exactly what 90404 is designed to prevent. You're talking about his attitudes. His attitude is he wants to shoot people. Now... I've admitted that kind of evidence in other trials when it's been appropriate. I didn't admit it in this case because, to me, what I've heard in this trial, and by the way, Mr. Richards Wait for absolutely it. correctly points out that just hours ago, I said I had heard nothing in this trial to change any of my rulings. That was before so the why? Testimony, Your Honor. Pardon me. That was before the Don't defense testimony. Don't get brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well. Woo! You, Know oh, very well that an attorney oh. can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled without asking outside the presence of the jury to do so. Wow. So Don't get brazen with me, he said. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty. You know, what is Kyle Rittenhouse facing as far as charges and how are the prosecutors doing on that so far? Well, he's facing first degree reckless homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. Uh, that is against Joseph Rosenbaum. At 60 years in prison and an additional five for the dangerous weapon modifier. He's facing first degree recklessly endangering safety, use of a dangerous weapon. Again, the modifier on there, 12 and a half years and a five year addition for the modifier. First degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. That's for Anthony Huber's death. This is Anthony Huber who swung a skateboard at his head and tried to grab Rittenhouse's gun. Attempted first degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. First degree recklessly endangering safety, possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18, and failure to comply with an emergency order from state or local government. So real quick, some of the testimony that blew this up. This is Richard McGinnis, a reporter for The Daily Caller, who was on the scene explaining what he saw. And this will go directly to one of those charges. This is just how bad it's going for the prosecution. AR, as we refer Correct. To it. Yes. Mr. Rosenbaum is running towards Kyle Rittenhouse, correct? Correct. And there's nothing between those two individuals to block Mr. Rosenbaum's view, correct? Correct. Could have stopped at any time once he sees an armed individual, correct? I assume he could have, yes. He kept advancing. Correct. And he continues to advance until he makes a lunge for the weapon, correct? 
Yes, it appeared that he was lunging for the front portion of the, of the weapon. Okay, which would be the business end of an AR-15. Yes. And you know as you sit here today that he yelled the words F you, but the whole words, correct? Yes. Okay, what was the tone of his voice as he yelled that? Very angry. As he goes at Kyle Rittenhouse, correct? Correct. So he's going for Kyle Rittenhouse's gun. He's screaming F you at the top of his lungs. This is how the testimony, uh, testimony is going. Now, this is one of these shooting victims that survived. This guy got shot in the arm, and he admits that he pulled a gun on Kyle Rittenhouse first. I'll bring this all back to the charges, and then we'll go to this bombshell that maybe the prosecution is trying to screw up this case on purpose for a mistrial so they avoid Kyle Rittenhouse being acquitted. An assertion Grosskreutz denied. You were chasing him with your gun? Yes? No. You didn't chase him down Sheridan Road, pulling your gun, chasing after him. That's a lie. You're saying that didn't happen. I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but I wasn't chasing the defendant. You were running after him? No. No. Okay. But in a key <laughs> moment, the attorney oh, watch used this. a photo taken around the time Rittenhouse fired to try to portray Grosskreutz as a threat and got the witness to admit that his gun was pointed toward the teen when he was shot. It wasn't until you pointed your gun at him, advanced on him, with your gun, now your hands down, pointed at him, that he fired, right? Correct. Ooh, not good. And there was a lot more in the courtroom uh, that led to all of these moments. But um, the only thing I think that they thought they had going for them was this Kerry Washington witness who said that, brace yourself there, brace yourself. Kyle Rittenhouse seemed nervous on the scene. I don't know how that is going to get any of these charges to stick. Other than smoking with gloves on, anything that Kyle Rittenhouse did that you noticed that was in any way erratic, threatening, use any term you want. Um, use any term that you want to describe. Anything that was out of the ordinary about his behavior. I would... The only thing I could say that was, I, I don't, it may be, it's, uh, to be fair, like, this is just, I suppose, my opinion. He just seemed like he was young and, like, he didn't know exactly, like, what was going on. And because he was smoking so much and he, again, the glo if he didn't have the gloves on, maybe I wouldn't have noticed as much, but I just don't know why, like, in the situation why you would have gloves on. Maybe there's some technical reason or something that you may know, but to me, that's just what stood, stood out to me. So that's the, the best witness the prosecution has. Not so great. So let's go back over these charges real quick before we get to the bombshell stuff. The first degree reckless homicide, that's Joseph Rosenbaum. You heard the testimony already that said that Joseph Rosenbaum was running at Kyle Rittenhouse, that he went for his weapon, that he screamed F you, that he was on the attack when Kyle Rittenhouse fired. That's going to appear to the jury to be self-defense. That means charge one is likely going to get shot down if things don't change drastically. Number two, first degree recklessly endangering safety use of a dangerous weapon. That's because McGinnis, the person you just heard testifying, saying about the FU and, and he, uh, the, uh, that uh, Rosenbaum was charging at Kyle Rittenhouse, he, he was there when the shot was fired, too. The, this reporter is not going to pursue anything here, and I don't think that the jury is going to see this as a charge that will stick. That would be two down. First degree intentional homicide. This is Anthony Huber. The jury has seen the footage of Anthony Huber attacking Kyle Ritten Rittenhouse with his skateboard, hitting him multiple times when he was down, hitting him on the back of the head, and a skateboard can do some significant damage. It wasn't until it seemed like it was the last opportunity that Kyle Rittenhouse pulled the trigger and ended up shooting and Anthony Huber. It's got a it's gonna be a hard, hard road for them to go down to get this to stick. Again, that would be three charges that fall. Attempted first degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. That's Gage Grosskreutz. That's who you just heard from. And he admitted that he pulled a gun on Kyle Rittenhouse. That charge is going to fall. First degree recklessly endangering safety use of a dangerous weapon. This is this man who is leaping at Kyle Rittenhouse. And in the melee, uh, one uh, round went off. And it all happened within a matter of seconds. The jury is never going to hit them on this. That would be five falling. 
Possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18. This actually has the best chance because Rittenhouse was 17 years old. If they get him on this charge, he'll spend nine months behind bars. As for failure to comply with an emergency order from state or local government, that means he was out past curfew like everybody else in all of the videos down there. But guess what? The prosecution screwed up so bad, they forgot to present evidence against charge seven. So the judge has dismissed the curfew charge. So that one's gone. So curfew's gone. You really only have possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18 that looks like it could stick. Uh, this was just an absolute massive failure by the prosecution. But the big question is, was it all on purpose? Check this out. Kyle Rittenhouse's defense attorney asked the judge to declare a mistrial on Wednesday, accusing prosecutors of asking improper questions. That goes back to the First Amendment thing. While he was testifying in his own defense, the defense accused prosecutors of intentionally trying to provoke a mistrial to avoid an acquittal because the case is going so badly for them and they want to start over. Instead, the defense is seeking a mistrial with prejudice, meaning prosecutors will be barred from retrying Rittenhouse a second time. That's how bad it has gotten. That's how tough uh, things uh, are looking for the prosecution in this case. And it's a, a melody of errors on their part that led to this. So what do you think? Do you think the prosecution is trying to sabotage their own case so they can get a mistrial and start over from scratch? It's like uh, you're, you're playing golf and... One goes off and out of bounds, and you want to you want to drop that ball, and you want to take that mulligan. That's what these attorneys are trying to do because they've done such a bad job so far. Uh, let me know if you think that that's what they're going for. Let me know how you think they're doing. Let me know if you think uh, the charges are going to be what I outlined, or what do you think? Is, is Kyle Rittenhouse going to be found not guilty? Is he going to be found guilty? Let me know what your thoughts are on this trial as we get closer and closer to the finish line right here. Hit that share button to spread the word with your friends and everybody else on social media. Facebook.com slash the news junkie. Please hit the follow button. I'd appreciate that. And you get videos just like this each and every day. Over at YouTube.com slash the news junkie. Hit subscribe. Thank you to my supporters on both channels on Facebook and YouTube. You can toss some money my way by subscribing. And it helps me put together these videos each day. So I love that. I'll look at your comments. I'll reply as I always do. We'll mix it up if we have to. And I appreciate you watching the video. We'll talk to you again real soon.